Welcome to AWS, AWS Wednesday at Stick Show. Now, we're going to execute another type of injection attack. This is called SQLI or SQL injection. SQL stands for Structured Query Language. So the long form would be Structured Query Language Injection. So what is SQL injection? It's a web application attack where malicious SQL code is injected into a query to manipulate a database or gain unauthorized access. Or sometimes we use it to just manipulate data causing website text defacement. We're gonna demonstrate a simple SQLI scenario. Then we will block it using AWS WAF or AWS Web Application Firewall. So let's begin. I'm here now in our EC2 instance page and we still have our two EC2s, Sticks Blog 1 and Sticks Blog 2. Now let's look at our load balancer configuration. We still have our Sticks ELB. And as we go into the details, I will copy DNS name. I will paste it in a new tab so we can access our web application via our application load balancer, Sticks ELB. Now, let's execute SQL injection. But how? Where is the input forms? Well, not too many people know this. SQL injection is not always delivered via input web forms with HTTP method posts. In this example, we're going to execute it using HTTP method get via URL. We're going to add codes in our URL, SQL query to be specific. So the query should look like this. So three, because this is the ID of our blog. And then we're going to use our main action, which is update blog underscore blog is the name of our table. And we're going to change the title field to whatever we want. So if we convert this query to URL, it would look like this. It starts with our domain name. Okay. Then slash blog, our path. This is the three. Okay. And then this is the update. It matches our query. We also have blog underscore blog, etc. As you all know, URL spaces are not allowed. To represent a space in a URL, we use percent or URL encoding. So spaces is replaced by percentage 20. Basically, well, historically, percentage 20 is also an ASCII character encoding, but still used in URL. Now, what I'm gonna do is I will use this, but before I copy and paste, let's add the new title. So this is our original title, vulnerable XSS blog one. I'm going to change this to I am the action star there. I'm going to simply copy. And before I paste to our URL, let me log in first. I will log in as test user, password, then log in there. I am now logged in as test user. I will paste this into a new tab. There you go. As you can see, the title now has been changed to I am the action star. If I refresh this, there you go. It reflects to our original page. Now let's block this using AWS WAF. So in our load balancer, let's go to the integrations tab, scroll down, click this arrow. And as you can see, our web ACL is still here. Our Load Balancer is still integrated to AWS WAF. Wow. Let's click this link. Okay, I will click Web ACL. Actually, here you go. here you go. We have Web ACL Web Poll, which is integrated to our ELB. I'm gonna click Rules now, and we will just simply add a new rule. I'm gonna click Add Managed Rule Groups, and we have many options, but we'll choose AWS Managed Rule Groups. So we've already enabled some of these rule groups. All we need to do is enable SQL database rule group. I'm going to click edit. And as you can see, it will inspect web application request, which is the default scope. And uh, look at the actions. All are SQLI based rules. Okay. And the rule action are also all blocked. So I'm going to click save rule now. I'm going to click add rules and uh, this is our new rule, AWS, AWS manage rules, SQLI rule set. 
Okay, and it doesn't really matter what number of priority is this new rule. So last priority, that's okay. I'm gonna click save now. There. So our new rule has been added to our web ACL web poll. Now let's test. So these are the two tabs. It doesn't really matter which one should we use for testing. I'm gonna click refresh. All right, so it doesn't work. Why? Because we didn't use our SQL injection. This is the original URL. So what I'm gonna do is I will copy again. Well, this time let's uh, use a different title here, a different value. Let's just use test try. Okay, and then I will copy and then I will paste. There you go. As you can see, our SQL injection is not working anymore because our AWS WAF prevented successfully. So what do you think? Preventing SQL injection is easy, isn't it? In the next video, we're going to talk about less web application hacking. It's more of features available in AWS WAF. See you around.